I want to say good morning and happy Sabbath. I want to welcome you to our Children's Corner. Uh, we were running into some technical difficulties, but we pray that we have, uh, the Lord has prevailed. And again, we want to welcome you out this morning to our Children's Corner. Again, I'm your host, Pastor Darren Tinsley. Today, I am joined uh, with the elders uh, of the Tinsley children, and I'll let him introduce himself. Philip, and I'm 11 years old. All right. Philip is 11 years old, just like Mr. Zachary uh, over there in Trinidad. You're 11 years old? <laughs> he just had a birthday, uh, so he's 12 years old. Um, so again, we want to uh, welcome you out this morning to our Children's Corner. And before we go into our lesson today, we are going to go into our Hidden Truth section, a uh, portion of our uh, Children's Corner where you get to see all the children who have taken this week uh, to memorize their scripture. And they actually sent it in to us. And so um, hope that you enjoy this section and that you would be blessed. is able to deliver us from the burden of our youth, and he will deliver us out of Popeye's hand, O King, down to the sea. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burden of our youth, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O King. Daniel chapter 3, verse 7. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O King. Daniel 3, verse 7. Happy Sabbath, everyone. This is my sister, Makila, and she is my Daniel 3 and verse 17 says, If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us out of the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O King. Daniel 3 and verse 17. Hello, my name is Timothy Tinsley, and I am 8 years old, and my memory verse is coming from Acts 17, verses 3. Opening and alleging that Christ must needs has suffered and risen again from the dead, that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ.
again, we hope that that was a blessing for you and that you were able to uh, see all the children there. And as you remember their faces, uh, that you remember to pray for them again today, our next week. I want to give our next week um, memory verse is going to be Daniel 6 and verse 22. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 22. And so that is going to be our memory verse uh, for next week. And so those who desire to send that to us, uh, you may uh, begin working on that and email us at uh, egbibleschool at gmail.com. Uh, and we will love to uh, put those uh, children doing their memory verse up for us um, as well. So before we go into our lesson today, we're going to be looking at the fiery furnace. Today we're coming out of Daniel chapter three, the fiery furnace. Um, and while we, and before we do that, we're going to ask Philip if he would lead us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Sabbath. Thank you for bringing us here together to learn your word. Help us to learn something more and help us to obey what you and do what is right. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 At this time, we are going to move into our lesson, Daniel chapter 3. We are coming from the fiery furnace. And we learned last week that... Um, Daniel and his three friends, as, as it is coined, um, Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael, and Daniel, they had their names changed, but the changing of their names did not change their character, right? Because name in the Bible denotes what? Character, character right? And so they sought to change their names. And so just like when we, while a lot today, people generally as a whole um, are not necessarily thinking of the character of their children when they pick names. Some do, some don't. But in spite of the changing of their name, because a lot of times people don't say your name, and uh, what do people call you for short sometimes? Instead of saying Philip, what do they call you? Phil, Phil you know, or uh, something. People tend to give us nicknames um, rather than calling our names. In a sense, they may give us a name that uh, sometimes is easier to say, and sometimes it may resonate with something that uh, is familiar to them. And so, you know, they may call you chubby or they may you know, call you freckles or, uh, or binky or, or something that resonates with something that is cute and, and, and that name tends to follow us throughout our whole lives. And so rather than being known by the name that was given to us by our parents, you tend to be known by what others call you, either in your neighborhood, friends, names you've developed at school. Um, but while God gives us a name that denotes character, there was a time when these uh, Israelites came to Babylon. And one of the first things Nebuchadnezzar did was what? Change their, change their names to be more appropriate with the lifestyle that he had devised uh, for the people there. But what did Daniel do? Purposed in his heart, what? That he would not defile himself. That he would not defile himself. With what? The king's meat. The, ki the king's meat and the wine that he drank. And also he would not allow the atmosphere around him. Um, what are some of the... Now, think about this. When Daniel was there in Babylon, uh, did his parents come with him? No. No. So what does that tell us about... Daniel's character and what what lesson can we as adults as well as children learn from that? That he did the right thing even when his parents were not there. All right. So so your parents don't always have to be around you 
should not always have to be around you in order for you to what? Do us right. Do us right. All right. Now, Joseph, not Joseph, but Jesus. When Jesus went to the temple, he was 12 years old and he was lost to his parents for how many days? Three days. Three days. Now, in that three days, um, was Jesus in the lost and found? Uh, you know, Mary and Joseph came back and they, they, they found him among the, you know, the lost and found. And there he was uh, somewhere in a corner shaking and crying for his mother and father saying, oh, Lord, please. And, you know, crying. And he was hysterical. Is that how they found him? No. How did they find him? Teaching the Pharisees. He was teaching the Pharisees. And then what did he tell Mary and Joseph? when they asked about his disappearance. What did he tell them? Did you not know that I was about my father's business? All right. So at 12 years old, this young man in the temple in Jerusalem, three days, that means he had to find his own food. He had to find a place to sleep. He had to get up in the morning. He had to go to bed at night. He had to eat throughout the day. He had to find something to do to keep himself busy. And yet when they found him, he basically said for the last three days, what had, what has he been doing? His father's business. He's been doing his father's business. So there's a lesson that we learned as parents, and that is we are to prepare our children to be able to stand for God, not just in our presence. We don't have to be there smacking their hand every five minutes. When, uh, when Daniel and his friends were walking down that buffet and they're slaves. So they probably hadn't eaten for a while though, or at least anything good. And all of a sudden here they are now at this huge buffet and they're looking around and, and they're like, man, this, uh, oh man, I ain't seen this type of food in a long time. I'm hungry. And all of a sudden, Daniel's mother uh, just came out of here and, out of the, and said, Daniel, we don't eat that. No, nope. Daniel, that has pork in it. No, 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 we don't eat that. Did his parents do that? No. no, they weren't there with him. So Daniel made a decision on his own that he would not what? Defile himself. He would not defile himself. He would live as in the presence of God. And this is what we're all having to learn um, because it's not just our children. Sometimes when parents can be away from other uh, of their peers and there's no one there necessarily to make them hold them accountable for the various things they may put on their plate or the various conversations they may get in. Um, they may be at their jobs and they may be in the boardroom or the workplace and they find themselves uh, uh, hearing indecent jokes or various things are presented to them. And because there's no, no real accountability around, parents, adults may find themselves being tempted to violate the principles of God. So it's not just the children that we're training to stand true to God, but it's also as adults, we have to realize that we're accountable to God as well. So Daniel and his friends made this decision and could they, did they maintain their conviction? Yes. Yes. They remain true to God. But now another test came and let's go to chapter three. Another test came. And so Satan said, you know what? You know, Daniel made that decision um, that he would not defile himself. Uh, Daniel made that decision that he would not defile himself. And so the devil said, you know what? Let's separate them. You know, let's, you know, let's, uh, Let's see how they stand now. You know, they're OK. Yes, they they made a decision that they were not going to eat. But let's bring another test. Um, and this time we'll separate him. We won't have Daniel there. And so maybe Daniel was the oldest and maybe, maybe Daniel was that one that they looked up to. 
And the enemy saw that and he said, you know what, let's let's move Daniel out of the way and we'll see how they're going to respond now. Uh, we're going to put them in a different environment. Um, we're going to take them from uh, we're going to take them out of their quote unquote homeschool setting and we're going to put them in a public school setting and we're going to allow the peer pressure of everyone around them to lead them to make a bad decision. And so this was a case of peer pressure. Everyone now is going to be doing the same thing. How would they respond? Because what's interesting when you think about Daniel chapter one, Philip, is that it appears as though Daniel and his friends were not all sitting at one big table with everyone. Meaning like it wasn't like a long table and Daniel and his friends was here and Nebuchadnezzar sat at the head of it. It appears as though when this food was presented to them, it was, it was almost like it was brought to them. It was almost like it was brought to their room, you know, like room service. When you look at Daniel chapter one and Satan looked at that and Satan said, okay, all right. They were, they were faithful there. Uh, they didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't fall for my temptation, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take them out of their home and I'm going to bring them into a public place <clears throat> and I'm going to bring them. And, and because of what everyone is doing now, now I'm going to use peer pressure to get them to violate the principles of God. And this is a lot of times what Satan does. We'll be at home and we'll, yes, I, I'm, I believe in the truth and I'm going to stand for the truth. And, and you know, we, we, we get our children on certain regiments and we say, yes, they're going to do this. They're going to do that. Yes. And our children are sitting up and our children are, yes, mommy and yes, daddy. And, and they but all of a sudden they get in a public setting and now maybe there are some people in their environment, some other kids there who don't say yes. Maybe there are other children there who throw temper tantrums and, you know, and their mother tries to give them something and they say, no, I don't want that. And they, and they throw it down and they fold their hands and they stomp their feet and they say, no, I'm not going to do that. And, and there are other children there who may be drinking something or eating something. Um, and they may be dressed in a particular way and they look like they're having fun because their parents allow them to just go and do everything and run everywhere and, and just no accountability. And so all of a sudden now there's peer pressure. Now it's like, wow, why do I have to dress like this? Why do I have to eat like this? Why do I have to be quiet and listen and pay attention? When all the other kids get to play, they get to, you know, watch their little Bible movies while the preacher is preaching. You know, they get to uh, lay on the pew and go to sleep and they get to chew gum and they get to do all these other things. Why do I have to? And all of a sudden, Satan is whispering into the minds of the children and is saying, why do I have to do this? But. Is God requiring a decision to be made by young people? Yes. yes. Because notice what the Bible says. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes. Where am I? Mm, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And let's look at verse... Mm. 12, chapter 12, and let's look at verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. What does it say? Remember thou thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the nears draw not, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. All right, so the Bible says, remember now thy creator when? In the days of thy youth. In the days of thy youth. Let's look at 
uh, Psalms 119, 105. Well, Psalms 19 and verse 9. Psalms 119, verse 9 to 11. All right. Let's see. Um, let's look at verse 1. Let's look at verse 1 first, and then verse 9, 10, and 11. Psalms 119 and verse 1. What does that say, Philip? Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. All right. So blessed are the undefiled who walk in the law of the Lord. Law of the Lord. This is very important for Daniel chapter 3. Look at verse 9 through 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay, so the Bible says, blessed are the undefiled that walk in the way, that who, blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the, law of the Lord. This young man must take the word of God and what must he do with it? Hide it in his heart, in his heart right? Now, let's go to Daniel chapter 3. Let's go to Daniel chapter 3, and let's look at our memory verse for a moment. We want to go back to our memory verse of Daniel 3 and verse 17. All right, Daniel 3, Daniel 3, and verse, you guys got to be quiet. Daniel 3, and look at verse 17. It says, if it be so, this is what they said. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But then he says in verse 18, um, But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not what? Serve thy God. We will not serve thy God gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Why do you think, Dan, why do you think these uh, Azariah, Mishael, and Hanani, why do you think they would not worship the image? Because they were, they, because they believed in God. Okay, they believed in God, but what specifically um, uh, you think that would cause them not to worship this image. Remember, blessed are the undefiled that in the way that walk in the law of the Lord. What would make them not worship this image? The Ten Commandments. Oh, so what about the Ten Commandments? They read them. They, they pulled out a scroll out of, their, out of their garments and they opened up the Ten Commandments. Because they had they studied the Bible. And they knew, <clears throat> and they knew what it said. Okay, what what does the Ten Commandments tell us? Where is the Ten Commandments in the Bible? Exodus twenty. Okay, let's go there. Let's go there. If you have a marker, keep it in Daniel two. Let's go to Exodus twenty. Philip said it's in Exodus chapter what? Twenty. Twenty. You got to speak up so they can hear you in Canada. All right, They're listening. And they you got they got to be able to hear you all the way in Maryland and and, and Trinidad. So you got to speak up, like you're trying to talk to them. All right. So okay, where here, where in the Ten Commandments that would or where in the where in the Ten Commandments that tells us that we should not bow down and worship images. Verse Exodus twenty and verse five. Exodus 20 and verse uh, 5. Okay, read that for us. What does it say? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Okay, so you're saying that 
they were familiar with the commandments of God. And because these commandments was, and because the word of God was in their heart, they said, I cannot bow down to this image. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Right. So they well, they obeyed the word of God, even though their life was at stake. Because you go back to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Now, when we look at the environment of Daniel chapter 3, the Bible tells us here in Daniel 3 that there was a lot of music, um, all kinds of music, all um, all any genre of music that you could think of was here on the plain of Dora. Satan used music to bring everybody together. And while all this music was playing, he wanted them to fall down and worship. And those who did not worship, what did he say would happen to them? All right, look at. Uh, Daniel chapter 3 and look at verse 11. Uh, Daniel chapter 3 and let's look at verse 11. What does that say? And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that should be cast into... No, no, no. Read that slow. Read it slow. Read it again. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of of a burning fiery furnace all right so now it says that there was a penalty that let's see there was a penalty that was given to those who did not bow down and worship now we know that based off our memory verse uh, that they chose not to bow down but we have to think about the, the, all that they had to resist, meaning that when all this music was playing, all kinds of music, maybe some music even from um, where they were, all types of music played. And this music, and it, 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 it would probably bring, cause them to relax and, you know, just kind of get into the groove of things, just get into the feeling of things. But they maintain their integrity. And while everybody, now notice what it says. Um, I want us to notice what it says. Um, and let's look at verse um, uh, let's look at verse 7 look at back up to verse 7 it says therefore at the time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet the flute the harp the sackbut the psaltery and all kinds of music, all the people, some of the people, all the people, all the people, the nations and languages, what did they do? Fell down. Fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. But then it says in verse 2, verse 12, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. These men, O king, have not what? Regarded, regarded thee. Watch this. They serve not thy God, nor worship the golden image, which thou hast what? All right. So did they bow? No. No. So in spite of all of what everyone else was doing around them, they maintain their hold on God. They maintain their hold on God. And so the thing is, when we look at 
the promises of the word of God. Let's look at let's look at one. Let's go to Psalms. I believe we might have read this. Um, Psalms 34. Let's go to Psalms. 34. All right. Psalms 34. And we're going to look at verse seven. Psalms 34. And let's look at verse seven. What does that tell us? The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. All right. So here the Bible tells us that the angels of the Lord do what? And campeth round about them that fear him and of what? Delivers them. And delivers them. So here we find that because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, chose the word of God over life itself, God delivered them. So in spite of all the pressure of others like them that bow down, what did they choose to do? Obey God. They chose to obey God. So what does that tell us about even, it does, is God expecting young people to obey him? Yes. Remember thou thy creator in the days of thy youth. In the days of thy youth. So God is looking and expecting young people. God is expecting the, the, um, the youth to be um, examples wherever we are. And so as Daniel was separated from his friends, because again, maybe Satan said, you know what? You know, they did that at home, but let's see how they're going to act when we, when we go into public. Let's see what they're going to do when all of these people around them, all of these adults and everywhere is bowing down. Let's see if we can pressure that family that, yeah, they may uh, profess certain things at home, but when we get them in an environment where everyone is worshiping the image, then we're going to see how they're going to stand. And this is what Satan is planning because the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that another image is going to be set up and all the world is going to be tried, that all the world is going to be tried. And God is purposing that his people will stand firm to him and be a light to the world. So, when we look at Daniel chapter three, there are lessons for for the parents and there are also lessons for the children. There's lessons for the family. And that is separated from each other. God still expects us to be obedient. The parents doesn't have to be always over every five minutes correcting. And no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't touch this. No, no, no. Don't say that. Don't do this. But we have to learn individually and we have to train our children to love God and to worship him with all their hearts. And we must set examples as parents. We may be away from our children. We may be at work. We may be um, around other individuals. And there's no real sense of accountability to these individuals because maybe they don't know what we believe. So being as strict as we would normally be in different settings, we may find, ah, you know, I could be relaxed a little bit, you know, um, I'm here at work. I don't want to make anyone feel bad by my religious convictions. And this is what Satan is doing. He's, he's trying to bring about our downfall. And so we have to be firm wherever we are and set an example. In the same way we set an example for our children. And we want to encourage them to be faithful to God wherever they may be. So that when, that when these situations present themselves, that they will know how to behave themselves. And it is up to us as parents to be able to share the testimonies of how, of the temptations that we're faced with and how God helped us in various places. And so as they hear how God has kept us, when they're placed in those situations, those testimonies from their parents will come back to their minds. They'll say, yes, I remember my dad told me 
when he was on his job or he was here and he was tempted to do this and uh, these things were presented to him and how he stood firm and he saw the people getting angry and, and, and the, the, the looks that they gave him. But he remembered the scripture where it says, be not afraid of their countenances. And so as you stood firm, that testimony will come into play when your children are tempted to yield to the peer pressures of other children who are not walking in the straight and narrow path. So we want to encourage each other. Um, church per se is not all, is not the only time where we can share our testimonies as we sit around our tables, the different things that God is doing for us throughout the day that we will share them with our children so that they can see and know how to bring God into all places. Yes, we know how to come together with our Bibles and we know how to come together and be at church and we know how to sit up right in the pew. But what about throughout the week? What about in the grocery store? What about in our schools? All of our children are not being homeschooled. Some are in public schools and even in those places, they can let their light shine. But we have to give them encouragement and let them hear how God is keeping us and protecting our minds even while we're at work so that they will have a greater desire and a greater reason why, why they should be obedient to God. And they will long to come home and share how God has kept them and how they made a decision for God in those public spaces. And then we want to be able to encourage them to be faithful to the Lord. So once again, brothers and sisters, we want to thank you for tuning in this morning. I want to thank you, Philip, for joining us in our children's corner. Again, we want to uh, encourage all the parents and all of our young people who are watching us uh, throughout the world. Again, may God keep you. May God bless you. And again, make sure that you send us uh, your memory verse. Our memory verse for next week is Daniel 6, 22. Daniel 6 and verse 22. And so we're going to allow Philip to close us out with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for getting us here to study. Please be with us as we go throughout this Sabbath. Help us to enjoy it and help us to be faithful like Daniel and his friends. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So God bless.